but local people became suspicious when they heard jeeps traveling at night along isolated jungle tracks. They suspected cocaine smugglers, familiar in the area. Then, a hunter reported seeing a guerrilla training camp. In late March, an army patrol was sent up the river and was wiped out. Che Guevara's preference was to lie low and gather support, but the guerrillas had been forced into the open. Less than a month later, three self-styled journalists were detained as they left the guerrilla zone. One was the 27-year-old French intellectual and close friend of Fidel Castro, Regis Debray. 3 p.m., 29th of October. Debray in prison in the Bolivian oil town of Camiri. His military trial was still dragging on after 33 days. But World in Action cameras got past the armed guards with a signed pass from the military commander. Shadowed by soldiers and detectives, we were ordered to restrict our filming to silent pictures of Debray. The cell is good, you can see. There's, well, be, before, you know, it was uh, all shot, no? And yes. I didn't have light, but they have opened the, the window so I can read and I can write. I've been alone two months without possibility of communication. No? Well, a lot of official, officials of the army came in the, in the cell to, to hurt me, no? But of course I could not defend me because I was alone and there were 10 or 12. But that lasted only two or three days, you know? What did they do to the Regis? Well, they... <laughs> you can only take photos and you must obey orders, we were told. If you don't obey, you will be reported and punished. Please, it's only for photos. Well, I have some books. I'm reading at Edouard, the French poet. Yes. I have five or six books, and before I had as 50 books, but they, they put them off, you know, I don't know why. If you want to speak, it must be in Spanish. No, we... It was five months after Debray's capture before his military trial began. The audience who came to the hearings in Camiri's hastily converted library were mainly the wives of local oilmen and journalists from all over the world. The courtroom was ringed by armed guards, and no one could enter without a military pass and a vigorous frisking. The trial lasted 53 days. Each day, at 7 in the morning, Debray was taken from his cell and escorted to court past the bristling rows of bayonets. Debray and Ciro Roberto Bustos, a left-wing Argentinian artist, were the two key defendants. They were jointly accused of murder, robbery and rebellion. Any journalist who got too close to the accused was manhandled. This time it was the Reuters man. Debray, whose defense lawyer was chosen by the army, was tried by military tribunal because the Bolivians were convinced he was part of the guerrilla movement. The main charge against him was murder. But most of the evidence for this was drawn from his book, Revolution in the Revolution. There was no proof which would have convinced a British court of law. For 53 days, the trial droned on in stifling heat. The women who'd been specially recruited to support the military case by spontaneous demonstrations in court became bored. The journalists flagged in the heat. Then, on October the 31st, Debray was finally allowed to make his one and only personal plea to the tribunal. As his defense lawyer wound up his concluding speech, a heckler interrupted but was quickly ejected. By this time, the trial was even more of a formality, for with news of Che Guevara's death, Debray had unexpectedly broken down and admitted his involvement with the guerrilla movement. He told the tribunal, I would have liked to have been at Che's side and died with him. I want to make clear that this mission of mine to tell people abroad the aims of the guerrillas is an integral part of revolutionary work. 
In this sense, I not only affirm but demand that the tribunal consider me morally and politically co-responsible for the acts of my guerrilla comrades. Lo que pienso, señores oficiales, este respeto a las leyes y a las autoridades. Primero debería de respetar antes de faltar. Policía final, desocupe la sala. Debray's only public hearing was brought to an abrupt end. The same heckler, to Western observers apparently planted, interrupted again. The soldiers, who had been waiting outside, cleared the court. Regis de Bray was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment, the maximum penalty in Bolivia. He was never allowed to answer publicly the charges made against him. The court heard his evidence in private. But World in Action managed to talk to him through the window of his cell. Do you think it's been a fair trial? No, of course not. It was a repugnant comedy. Uh, because if you have chosen some witnesses, who are desertors or who don't have any moral quality to be witnesses. They have chosen some documents. They have cut off and invented some things. They have, the main, the main of all, they didn't expose the journal, the diario of Che. Here's the diary. The diary. The diary. The, the diary of That's Che. Right. Because in the diary of Che, only a visitant who stays a short time, and uh, they've told some things that are wrong. They've told that I have brought money to Che Guevara when I came. That's false, and it doesn't exist in the diary of Che. Yes. They've told that I had a mission to with the Communist Party of Bolivia, but that's false. I never saw a communist leader here in Bolivia. And I want to speak a lot of things, of course. Not about me, but about the guerrilla warfare and about all what has passed here and about the intervention of the CIA and about the, well, the intervention of the Yankees here. Yes, sure. Tell me a little bit about the intervention of the Yankees, uh, Regis. What do you feel about it in South America? Well, of course, the intervention is in every part, but in some parts, this intervention is covered, is, is, uh, has a, a kind of, of mask of, uh, of, uh, of curtain, you know? Yes. But uh, in the preparation of the trial, it was... Great. I have I have been uh, interrogated by some men of the CIA, and of course these agents of the CIA are not Americans, you know, Panamera, uh, Puerto Rican, uh, and a lot of Cubans, of course, contra-revolutionary Cubans. In Bolivian eyes, justice had been done. In his garden in La Paz, the American ambassador spoke of the part his country played in crushing the communist guerrilla threat. The ambassador is Douglas Henderson. <laughs> 